I am going to read to you from Devayuti Sarma's book of prayers for the non-believer. The first poem I'll read is, We Pick Flowers. The flowers that bloom on our hills are red, like the setting sun, like my grandfather's patterned loincloth, like my mother's mournful eyes, now empty of tears, like my brother's bullet-ridden shirt, like blood, our blood, which we spill indiscriminately. The flowers that bloom on our hills are yellow, like the calluses of my father's hardy heels, like my grandmother's gums empty of memories, like ripe rice grains, like a piece of dried pork, like the brass medallions of our ancestors. The flowers that bloom on our hills are blue, like the hills shrouded in mist, like the shawl my sister wraps herself with, like the city lights we spy upon on moonless nights, like the vehicles on which they come to tell us to behave, like the sky, our sky, without shade, without change. The second poem is We Nurture. We Nurture. I do dream, not like lovers, giddy, exhaustive daydreams, not like ambitious fathers, not like alley cats dreaming of fish, not like highway truck drivers dreaming of beds. I dream, like rivers do, of things lost, irretrievable. I dream of the past, a history of time incalculable. These days, I mostly dream of dead, dead turtles and crocodiles. Not the future which is foretold, the end will arrive. I dream of the past that glitters like a thousand stars on a summer night. The past that did not die, my past and yours. And his with matted hair, his with peacock feathers, his with a shaven head, his with a sacred thread, and his sons and grandsons, the past of kings and killers. Like a rag that cleans the floor, once my glittering attire woven in water, the past is lost. I am what is forgotten, like the beggar woman who once had a home. I cannot forget my abode beyond the stars, his hairy embrace in the glaciers, the palaces of silver and mud. And I am free to roam the earth, to collect shards of broken memories, to count specks of ashes. I dream, like mothers do, of their offspring's future. I forget my dream and dream yours. I weave at your device, as I will for generations after you. Like a patient mother, I make you forget, and I remember. I am the despair that gives you hope. I am the mother of all that is forgotten, of dead things, filth. I am the mother of this very existence. These lines, dry ink. I am the mother of drowned babies, suicidal virgins, fallen soldiers, lustful widows. I am the mother of decrepit bodies, mango box, sandalwood, of dirt, of fire. I am the mother of everything that decays, of boats and roots, of rain and the waning moon. The last poem is called, the last poem that I'll read is called, We Return. We Return. The Gulmohu tree outside your father's house, its scarlet flourish and its dark green attire, its wizened brown flesh. You know this tree. It tells you something in the language of the wind that caresses your unshaven face, adds scent to your nostrils. You knew this language. This tree language, encrypted in a gust of wind, amidst the blowing of dust. It was the first language you learned, before learning to cry, before learning to hide your face on your mother's bosom, before starting to use your feet. Days were long, then and nights short. Everything was new, and you had enough time to learn, and those petals were the color of the sun's last rays, were your first teacher. 
those finger-like leaves, your first friends, the great trunk, your first shelter. Now your days are short and nights long. Now you look for friends on the flickering screen of a tiny device. Now you're a homeless wanderer and you have forgotten the treetop. You stand there. You know you have forgotten something, but do not know what. You walk towards your father's house and you mumble. There once lived a boy who was happy. Thank you for listening. Do read this wonderful book of poems.